This is the Doma Television News Roundup. I am Mayowa Adesiloye. Here are the top headlines. Government Q40 in Nagatu. Community volunteer guards arrest notorious kidnapper in Motupo. Benway lawmaker weeps over other arrests. No fewer than 40 persons were during the week killed in a fresh attack on Odubeho in Agatu local government area of Benue State. Idoma Television reports that the attackers stormed the village around 4 p.m. on Sunday and hacked over 40 people to death. Confirming the attack, the senator representing Benue South Senatorial District, Comrade Abba Moro, said over 40 persons were killed by the attackers. Moro, who said he was deeply saddened over the attack, described it as highly condemnable and very unacceptable. The Senate Standing Committee on Establishment and Public Service Matters, Wednesday, organized a public hearing on the bill seeking the establishment of Ventral Welfare Fund and matters related thereto. The bill is sponsored by the Senator representing Benue South Senatorial Districts, Comrade Abba Moro. The bill passed first and second readings on the floor of the Senate on 5th March and 9th December 2020, respectively. In his welcome address, the chairman of the committee, Senator Ibrahim Shekarao, said the essence of the public hearing was to get stakeholders' views and suggestions on the bill, which would guide the committee on its reports to larger Senate for further deliberations. Delivering his keynote address, the originator of the bill, Senator Abba Moro, said he initiated the bill with the intention of establishing a fund that would provide financial and other forms of assistance and benefits to both serving and retired members of the armed forces and other security agencies. Kidnappers have threatened to kill a middle-aged Benue lady, Miss Faith Lydia Olopo who escaped from their den a few days after she was kidnapped. If she fails to pay the 5 million naira ransom, the family was asked to pay before her escape. The lady was said to have been kidnapped at Ichaku Edumoga in Okoku local government area of Benue State on 29th May, but a few days later escaped from her kidnapper's den at Kampala village close to Odoba community in Otokpa Ogbadibo local government area of Benue State on Saturday after her doctors who stood guard reportedly slept off as a result of drug overdose. Idoma Television reports that the victim is daughter of Mr. Joseph Olopo, proprietor of the famous St. Joseph Secondary School, Ichaku Idumoga in Okoku local government area of Benue State. The kidnappers, who were apparently enraged by her escape, put a call across to the victim father last week and threatened that the five million naira ransom they and the victim's family earlier agreed as, ran as ransom must be fully paid if the family wants to live in the area in peace. The community volunteer guards has arrested a suspected kidnapper in Otupo. The suspect, a 24-year-old John Ame from Adoka district of Otupo local government area, was arrested on Sunday, 6th June 2021, around Dr. John Ada College of Health Technology. The arrest followed a rescue operation by the Otupo local government community volunteer guards. After they kidnapped one Mr. Dennis Uwakwara and Mr. Elaigu Ame, Mr. Dennis Uwakwara was, however, rescued by the gallant men of the Otupo Volunteer Guards after a battle with the kidnapper in which the commander of the guard was shot. Meanwhile, the Nigeria Police Otupo Division said the suspect is already in custody and has confessed to the crime and presently being held for further investigation. The lawmaker representing Ada Obadibo Poku Federal Constituency, Francis Ota Agbo, broke down in tears on Saturday as he visited Ndabasi 
and other easy communities in both Ekile and Ijigban wards of other local government area of Benue State, where over 130 persons were recently killed in an attack by, by Fulani militia the previous week. While sympathizing with those who have lost close relations in the attack, the lawmaker condemned the attack, describing it as inhuman and ungodly. Ota wondered how a matter that has been resolved with the arrest and persecution of those behind the February killing of Alaji Musa would lead to such wanton killings and destruction. He therefore called on the people to put in place security arrangements to defend themselves against further attacks, saying it was their leg legitimate right to do so. A fresh crisis has hit the Benue State chapter of the All Progressives Congress. This followed a series of suspensions and counter suspension of members by factions of the party loyal to separate party leaders. Some members of the party in Boko, local government area, on Wednesday expelled Beki Opi and Abua Yaji, two loyalists of the state party leader and Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, Senator George Akume. In a statement issued by the Public Relations Officer of APC in Boko, local government, Tefa Ambem, on Wednesday, the APC Boko local government, local government chapter expelled former Boko local government chairman, Mrs. Beki Opi and Abu Ayaji from the party for abuse of the APC constitution, destabilizing party organs and masterminding party crisis. In response, the state party leadership on Thursday issued a counter statement and said suspended party members cannot suspend legitimate members. A Catholic priest with the Diocese of Makodi, Reverend Father Solomon Ufa, has donated a house to an aged woman. Mama Agatha Kwashena. Father Umfa is a priest with St. Augustine's Catholic Parish, Demekwe, according to the Benue State Capital. He is the founder of the Populative Cultural Festival, Keshashua. Mama Agatha had sometimes in 2020 visited to console Father Solomon Umfa after he was robbed. Sources said Mama had taken along with her six eggs on the visit which she presented to Father Umfa and the six eggs became the foundation of an enduring interest in Mama by the priest who later gifted a beautiful house to her. The gesture has attracted commendations from Nigerians across religious lines. We will be right back with national news. Make your money work for you. Invest in agriculture and make you huge returns on our different schemes. Save and watch your money grow. Let's help grow your finances. You can buy airtime, buy power, pay for your TV subscription. The new Cephas app. Save, invest, and build wealth. Farm for me as the number one agri-tech company in Nigeria and the pioneers of contract farming in Nigeria. We also engage in farm equipment rental services. And how do we make our money? We make money from the 10% farm management fee per hectare and whatever is left after paying our clients their invested capital in profit. We also offer farm equipment rental services and agritech consultant services to state and federal government. Welcome back. President Muhammadu Buhari has reiterated that his order to the Inspector General of Police and heads of other security agencies to shoot at sight any person or persons found illegally carrying AK 47s and other assault weapons remains intact. President Buhari further vowed that his administration will act firmly and decisively against any and all persons fomenting or carrying out attacks on the police force and other security personnel. 
The president spoke at the handing over of security equipment by the governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sonwolu, to the Lagos State Police Command during his one-day official visit to the state. He warned that a nation that turned its police personnel and infrastructure into targets of violence and destruction is a nation on the path of self-destruction. Gunmen have attacked the new Bamali Polytechnic area in Kaduna State and kidnapped scores of students and lecturers in the institution. Sussi said the gunmen invaded the school located along the Zaria Kaduna Expressway last night. Kidnapping incidents have been the order of the day in Kaduna State. Few months ago, 39 students of School of Forestry, Afaka, were kidnapped but released after their parents paid on this close ransom. Also a week later, students of Greenfield University along Kaduna Abuja Road were kidnapped. Their parents said they paid 160 million naira, including 10 brand new motorcycles, before their children were released. President Mama Dubari on Thursday inaugurated the commercial operations of Lagos Ibadan Railway project at the Mobolaji Johnson Railway Station, Ebutemeta, Lagos. Buari, while speaking during the ceremony, pledged that his administration would continue to prioritize the railway system as a transportation backbone that can transform industrial and economic activity in the country. The president expressed delight that his directive to the Federal Ministry of Transportation and Ministry of Finance on reaching financial agreements with appropriate co-financiers to partner with the federal government for the development of the Ibadan Railway was yielding results. He noted that Ibadan project would have a connection to the Tin Can Island port as well as West East Coastal Rail Line from Lagos to Calabar, linking Onisha, Benin, Wari, Yenogua, Patakot, Aba, and Uyo. The monarchs in the four local government areas in Akoko land of Ondo State have restated their call that the remains of the founder of the Synagogue Church of All Nations, Prophet Temitope Joshua, be buried in his hometown, Arigidi Akoko. The monarchs and the community leaders in the four local governments held a meeting on Thursday in Oka Akoko, the headquarters of Akoko Southwest Local Government Area, where they resolved that the interment of the late prophet should be held in his hometown. In the communique issued at the end of the meeting, the traditional ruler said Prophet Joshua had done well for the people of the Akoko land and deserved to be buried in Arugi de Akoko. The communique was signed by the monarchs of Oka Akoko and that of Ikarama Akoko, Oba Yusuf Adeleye and Oba Andrew Momodu respectively. That brings us to the end of News Roundup on Idoma Television. On behalf of the news editor, I'm a comrade Godwin, the production head, Chris Johnson, and the entire crew, I am Mayowa Adesunoye. Do have a lovely weekend.